I am enjoying altering the composition notebooks for journaling and gifting. I have a series that I am doing on this. Let's recap what I've done thus far. The first one was gel press painted and mark making. Number two was a collage. Number three was a grungy dendritic print. Number four, the carpet bag idea or a old placemat. Number five, the cyanotype. Number six was Mamagami utilizing magazine paper. And number seven was a fractured image. Today, we're going to use acrylic paint and texture to create this journal. Welcome to my channel. My name is Peg. I call my channel Two Old Crows Mixed Media. I like to make journals. That's kind of my main thing. So you will see a lot of journal creation from Coptic stitching to everything else. I dabble in the encaustic wax, just learning it. You'll see some of that. And there's a lot more going on over at my channel. So I hope you'll come join me. If you like my videos, give me that thumbs up, subscribe, and of course the notification bell lets you know when I upload additional content. So let's get started with this composition notebook. I picked a bunch of these up for 50 cents a piece and I am going through them and trying something a little different on each one. I want to use some acrylic paint on this one, so I'm sanding it down with a fine sandpaper just to scruff up that shiny cover on the book, and hopefully it will hold the paint much better. So that's my thought process here. So I'm going to wipe that dust off and pull out my paint. I want to start with a black gesso. So I'm opening up my gesso, and I realize that uh, my, first, my first jar here is, is a little old. And I, if anybody has any suggestions for reviving this gesso, let me know in the comments so I can, can revive that jar. But I pulled out a new jar, and I'm coating this book front and back with the black gesso. Once I have that done, I created some texture paste out of one part baby powder, or, or I'm sorry, one part glue, one part paint, and four parts baby powder. I wanted it to be black, so you can see I've created a small amount just to utilize on this project, and I'm pulling that through the stencil with a hotel key card. I want tone on tone on the front of this composition notebook. So we're utilizing black texture paste made with the black acrylic paint, glue, and baby powder on the front of this. And I've picked a couple of different stencils to use just to add a little bit of variation, a little bit of difference. I'm not putting them on in any order. I'm just trying to create that background of texture so that I have that to work with. And I will do that front and back. I'm just going to get a little bit here down in this corner. And I'm going to flip the book over and do the same thing on the back. And I'll set that aside, let it dry, and now I notice that I got some black paint on the edge of, of this book, so I'm going to embrace that and water down some of the acrylic black paint, utilize my baby wipe, and just gild those edges with the black paint. And then I'll pull out the first page and the last page because they're connected together. And once I pull those out, you will have a nice, clean opening on the book. And you have the edges gilded in black to cover up that uh, little splash. Now that everything is dry, I have some fine grit sandpaper that I will use to go over everything, remove, take it down just a little bit so it's not 
quite as textured. I do want the texture there, but I don't want it so that when it hits things, it rubs off or that it's uneven. I want to even everything up and, and sand it down. I'm just using deli sheets to put inside to keep the paint off of the off of the uh, pages. So I'm putting some aqua green, Liquitex Basic Aqua Green. I'm going to tone it down a little bit with the raw umber. So I don't want it quite that bright. I want it more of a rusty, grungy kind of representation. And I'm just kind of dry brushing this on. Adding just a little hint of the brighter green. And I'm going to let that dry. So I set that aside, let it dry, coming back in with that fine sandpaper just to kind of scruff it up and remove some of the paint that we just put down, giving it that more of a rustic, grungy type of representation. Coming back in with a little color um, where I think I might need it. And now I want to come back with a little bit of gold, but I want to tone the gold down a little bit too. So I'm going to start with a little bit of the raw umber, um, add the gold to the raw umber, and just go over the entire piece with the gold. Of course, we're going to set that aside, do it front and back, set it aside, allow it to dry, and come back with that fine grit sandpaper once again. Now, I'm using a light touch with the sandpaper, not a heavy touch. You get too heavy with it, and you'll, you'll rip your book. So just you know, keep in mind that this is paper, and we want to be aggressive enough to remove some of that paint, but not so aggressive that you damage the book. Now that I have that where I like it, I'm coming back with the stays on black ink around my outside edges. Okay, it's starting to take shape. Now I have the gilding wax, the uh, tarnished gold, or the bronze is what I'm using here, the bronze gilding wax. And I'm just going around the edges and the highlighting some of the texture. And I'll do that both front and back, of course. And now I'm just going over it once again with that uh, fine sandpaper. I use that a lot in this little project. And to seal everything in, I'm coming back with the Mod Podge hard coat, front and back. On my deck, I have a bottle opener with a brass container underneath it. And when someone opens a bottle, the cap falls into that. It is outside. It allows those caps to rust naturally. I'm going to hammer them down to a flat representation and cover them in black gesso. I am only using one for this project, but if you hit that uh, notification bell, you will know when I upload the additional content utilizing these bottle caps for a piece of ephemera for your journals. So hit that subscribe button and that notification bell. Once I get these coated, I want to allow them to dry. I might speed that process up a bit with my heat gun, but I will tell you, when you use the heat gun on these bottle caps, they do get hot and uh, can, can uh, feel pretty warm to the touch. I want to add a bit of the Distress Oxide Spray to these. This is uh, peeled paint 
just hit it with the peeled paint and then come back in with the brick color. So two, two different colors of the Distress Oxide Spray. Let that dry just a little bit. It doesn't take long. And then come back in with that second color. I like the way that peeled paint looks, so I decided to take it over to the front of the book. So I'm going to put that on, and I've already hard-coated it with the Mod Podge. So I will put this on and kind of layer this in between another coat of that um, Mod Podge. So I'm going to put this on, allow it to dry, and then coat it once again with the hard coat. But I'm not going to uh, bore you with that second coat of Mod Podge here, so just know that that's what I did, please. So I like the way that peeled paint is looking on the front of that book. And I'll do the same on the back once that's good and dry. I'm just going to quicken that drying with a little bit of the heat gun. Now I want to come back and hit it with some ink. This is the uh, Stazon Black ink and I'm utilizing a wood script stamp and I'm just randomly putting that script onto the cover. And like I said, we'll do that final Final coat of Mod Podge once we once we finish finish working with it here. Just outlining it. And now to add the closure, I will use one of the bottle caps. I'm going to mark where I'm going to drill the hole in the center and I will take that to my drill press and drill, drill a hole. And now I'm going to punch through my book where I want that to go and utilize just a little brad to attach it. But I feel like the bottle cap is laying too flat that I'm not going to be able to wrap my closure around it. So I'm just going to take a pair of pliers and just slightly, ever so slightly, turn up the edges just to create that groove or that spot to wrap my seam binding because I'm going to use the seam binding to create the closure. So now that I have that done, we'll go back, put it through with the brad, and test it once again to make sure it's going to allow us that space. Yeah, and that's going to work fine. So let's get that into place. clear off some space on my desk so I can work and get out the seam binding. And there's a couple of colors in here that I think might look good. I kind of had my eye on that light green, but there's also this color that I think might look good. I'm going to lay them both down and decide on one. I chose the light green. You may have liked the buff a little bit better, but I have that those light green kind of highlights in the book, so I wanted to go off of that. I'll just cut that to the appropriate length, and then we'll attach that to the back cover. I 
and I am just going to use masking tape to attach this. You know, I've, I can glue it down first and then hit the masking tape, but I think the masking tape will be fine. This is very thin. Um, it's seam binding, so it's very thin, and I'm just thinking that if I sturdy it up really well with the masking tape, that that will be plenty. And that is how that's going to wrap. And that gives me, by doing the closure like this, that gives me space for this to grow and include things in it other than just writing. I'm going to cover the inside front and the inside back with book pages. I am taking the lazy way out and laying down my foundation with a full book page. And then I will come back in and add some smaller pieces on top to add a little more interest. And I'm going to do this inside front and inside back. So I'll set those aside, let them dry, and now I'm going to come back and finish this book off with a little bit of canvas on the spine. These books are inexpensive and sometimes the spine has little divots on it when you receive them, so I thought rather than covering my whole spine, I would add these small rectangles of canvas up and down the spine to kind of cover up those spaces that were a little dinged from uh, shipping and sitting in a store. So I have the rust stained canvas cut into small rectangles and I'm just going to wrap that around the spine and glue it into place. And I think that looks pretty good, but I do think that spine looks a little sparse. So I'm going to come back with my liquid pearls and just zigzag my way in between them and then come back and dot in between those zigzags. And that kind of ties in with the gold that I have highlighted a little bit or the little gold accents. We'll put a little bit on the canvas as well. We have the inside cover with the book pages, inside back with the book pages, and now we're finishing off the spine with the liquid pearls. Put a little dab of that on the closure and bring everything together. So I'm starting to be happy with this. I just wanted to get that. I kind of smudged that into that uh, bottle cap. I just want to get it on there to make it cohesive. Just kind of add that color. Now I'm going to put the little dots on the edge of the book as well. And the one last thing that I see on this project, I think that green seam binding looks a little stark laying there on the cover. So I'm pulling in my canvas, and I am just going to cut it into small little strips, and I will tie that around the bottom of this seam binding. So I have the little flags kind of created on the bottom of that to pull the canvas into the tie. So as you can see here, I've tied them on, and now I think the book looks like it's meant to be. So we have the canvas strips on the seam binding to pull that canvas from the spine into that closure, and I'm pretty happy with, with the finished project. The bottle cap, I think, creates a nice little closure, kind of rustic. The texture with the colors put into it that are the darker colors with a little bit of hint of that green and gold kind of give this a grungy rustic look and I am happy with the final project. I hope you are as well and I hope you will join me or take a look at the rest of the composition books that I've altered. I think these make great gifts here at the holidays. This is being done in November of 2022 so take a look at that playlist and see if there's something there 
that might spark your interest or provide you with some inspiration to alter one of these composition books. I shall say bye for now and see you in the next composition completion.